Good day to you, Guyana, and welcome to Facing the Nation. I am Malika Ramsey. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Of course, we are in a new era. Guyana is in a new era, so it's no longer Facing the Nation with the leader of the opposition. Obviously, it's just Facing the Nation. And uh, I la would like to take this opportunity to say congratulations to all of Guyana. Of course, not only because you're preparing to celebrate the 49th independence anniversary, but because we have been able to solidly vote in a new government we are now governed by a Partnership for National Unity, Alliance for Change, that's the coalition government, of course, headed by Brigadier the Honorable David Granger, His Excellency Brigadier the Honorable David Granger, and of course, Mr. Moses Nagamutu, Prime Minister. Again, congratulations to both gentlemen and congratulations to Guyana as a whole because we would have achieved something new. What I'll be doing on Facing the Nation for the next couple of weeks or so is featuring some of the new ministers. I'll try to feature as many of them as I possibly can. Some of the new ministers, government ministers, who would have been sworn in under a Partnership for National Unity, Alliance for Change. I know uh, during the elections, during the election season, the campaigning season, we promised you transparency. We promised that the public would be involved at every level. So what we're doing is uh, exposing our ministers to you. We're not just putting them in office and not giving you a chance to see and hear from them. We'll definitely give you that chance to see and hear from them. It is my pleasure to welcome the first person, the first minister who would have been sworn in earlier this week to the program. She was on the program before a few weeks ago. That was when we were promoting the women's rally for a partnership for national unity, Alliance for Change. This time uh, she is a minister, uh, the minister within the Ministry of Education. It is my pleasure to congratulate you and welcome you, ma'am, Miss Nicolette Henry. Welcome back. Thank you, Malaika, and thanks for having me on your program. All right. It's, it's great to have you and uh, great to have one of the fresher faces, uh, in a sense, still new to the public. First of all, uh, Nicolette, I know you, you recently met with the staff of the Ministry of Education, but we're definitely going to be talking about that a little later on. For people who are still learning about Nicolette Henry and, and what she brings, who is Nicolette Henry? Well, first of all, um, in terms of who Nicolette Henry is, as a professional person, um, I served as an army officer um, from the years 2000, from the years 1994 to 2005. Subsequent to that, I worked um, here in country at the U.S. Embassy, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Office, um, for nine years as a program development specialist and then as a public health specialist. Um, with regards to my technical expertise and professionalism, I come, of course, as an Army officer, a pharmacist, and a public health practitioner. Mm -hmm. That's basically me in, with regards to that. Um, I am a Berbician, born and raised in New Amsterdam, attended Burbys High School mm -hmm. and New Amsterdam Multilateral. Um, I'm the mother of one. I have a 15-year-old daughter who um, attends Queen's College. Okay. I have several other children who I call my children, children. Mm -hmm. but that was one <laughs> biological child. And um, I also would like to mention that um, I serve as the secretary for my um, church council, that is the Redeemer Lutheran Church in Cherry mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. um, and th those are some of the things that um, I would mention at this point in time about me as, um, as a person. Okay, all right, great. Now, you have been sworn in as minister within the Ministry of Education. What would be your role as the minister within? Is it, it, would it be a supporting role to the Minister of Education or uh, do you have other tasks set out for you? Well, first of all, um, what is going to happen and how we intend to manage um, the leadership of the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. is that myself and Dr. Rupnarayan, mm -hmm. for most parts, will um, work together as a team okay. um, on all the fronts so that we can address the issues collectively. As we get to wrap our heads more around the issues and become very much more involved, mm -hmm. we can then separate and divide up, you know, as to who will take the lead and who's better suited for whatever areas. Um, you probably are aware at this point in time that 
the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture will yes. also mm -hmm. fall under um, the leadership of the mm. Ministry of Education. Okay. So there will be those responsibilities also. Okay. I, I'm happy that you brought up, that you made mention of the Ministry of Youth, Culture and Sport. Because the fact is, uh, recently in the last uh, 24 hours, or I should say 48 hours, uh, the partnership has coming, the, 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 the coalition, I should say, the coalition government would have come in for some criticisms as to why there is no uh, youth ministry separate or a, a youth and sport ministry. I know you may not be able to say <laughs> as in why uh, regarding who made a decision, but are you confident that the ministry of uh, youth and sport can function effectively under the ministry of education? Well, I'm, I'm confident that that can happen and can work well. Mm -hmm. I'm also certain that there are examples where that would have worked well in, in other settings. Okay. Um, and, and so that, while it may be new to Guyana, mm -hmm. I, I don't think Guyana is a first in that regard. Okay. And, um, and generally speaking, I believe things work well when you put you know, your best effort to bring that to bear. You, br you bring your, um, your expertise that we have the people with the right skill set and experience, mm -hmm. um, what essentially is going to happen? Um, the persons that would have worked in those departments, um, they will still be available to serve, mm -hmm. um, but it's just the way in which they report um, that will be different, the reporting mechanism. But there will still be sport, there will still be youth issues, there will still be issues of culture that will be addressed. Um, it's, it's basically how it's organized. So it's not like anything is, you know, falling off of the radar okay. or coming off of the table. As you know, youth is critical to the development of this country. Mm -hmm. um, youth goes very well with education. In fact, the two can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good opportunity to definitely bring the two close if you have the same team managing both areas. Okay. Um, there will also be an opportunity to um, to do a little of a little bit of twinning with regards to sports, culture, and education, mm -hmm. because sometimes, well, I'll say sometimes in this instance, um, you need to be broader than academic. True. If you're yes. to reach your full potential if you are to develop an individual in keeping with the 21st century professionalism, you need to have a balanced um, person mm -hmm. who would be competent not only academically, but with regards to extracurricular activities, which will fall entirely within the ambit of sports and culture. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a great opportunity. I look forward um, to um, getting the support from the public as we move this forward. As I said before, it's more, it's, it's just a mechanism. Okay. And um, you know, I encourage you not to get yourself particularly hung up on mm -hmm. how the reporting structures work, but okay. rather to, um, to come out and support and, and lend yourself your services and your expertise to move the process forward. All right, great. Now, uh, we know from 2011 to now, uh, uh, the, His Excellency, the President, uh, Brigadier David Granger, would have campaigned on the fact that we need to develop, we need to uh, lift our uh, education sector in order for Guyana to, go, to move forward at a, a fast rate. What would be your, because I know you did explain that you still have to sit down with Dr. Rupna Ryan and decide who's responsible for what and who will work in what area. But as far as you see, what would be the first uh, problem in the education sector that you would like to uh, contribute to fixing? Well, first of all, um, I, I believe that generally speaking, um, the education sector is a section that is functioning. Mm -hmm. um, what we intend to do is to facilitate the process to um, probably improve on the quality of service that we deliver, the quality okay. of education that we deliver to our um, children here in, and even adults in country. Um, that is what needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, for me, a priority would be to ensure that um, the strategic plan that is currently in draft um, becomes a final document and a living document. Um, there's tweaks that will have to be made to ensure that um, it delivers mm -hmm. um, to the best of what 
you know, our capacity will allow us to develop here in country and so that uh, we can also expand the reach of quality education beyond the coastal regions and improve okay. and make, you know, education uh, more accessible and at a higher level to persons in the rural communities. That would be the focus. Those mm -hmm. are very broad um, areas that I've identified. Mm -hmm. Of course, those will have the strategic objectives as to how we will achieve um, those priorities and there yeah. will be activities that will follow. Okay. Um, I'm going to be looking at the implementation plan. We're going to have review of um, what we have achieved in the education sector thus far mm -hmm. because the draft um, is dated 2014 to 2018 and we're in 2015, 2015 now. Yeah. So um, having had the benefit of the review, then we're going to um, use that information mm -hmm. strategically to, to move forward and to improve um, you know, in areas that we have already begun to work in. Right. Um, it's not going to be disruptive. The transition is expected to be as seamless as possible. Mm -hmm. What is working well will continue yeah. to work. Where there are gaps, we're going to ensure that the adjustments are made so that we can improve on education in this country. All right, I have two final, uh, quick, two quick questions actually uh, before I let you go. Now, you've, again, a few hours ago, you would have met with staff at the Education Ministry, yourself and Dr. Rupnarain, of course. What are some of the concerns that they may have had? If, if you can uh, uh, publicly say them and, and what measures will be put in place for those concerns of staff members at the Education Ministry to be addressed almost immediately? Well, first of all, um, yesterday meeting was, was not a staff meeting okay. per se. Mm -hmm. It basically was um, our first visit to the office. Mm -hmm. And so we met with the permanent secretary mm -hmm. and the chief education officer. Um, today, we're going to meet with the heads. Um, so we're going to have a policy meeting okay. coming out of that. We're expecting that um, we'll be brief on what some of the gaps are, what um, some of the opportunities that ca will present itself, given that we have a new um, leadership in place. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we will take it from there um, quite informally. Um, I've met with some of the staff as, you know, I'm in the office and people do, felt as though there was a need to, um, to let their concerns yeah. be known. Yeah. And so um, they have addressed with me some of um, the challenges that they may have had in particular areas. I, <laughs> I've asked that, um, you know, they get those to me and we work as a team as far as possible mm -hmm. because I believe that um, if we work together as a team, we will better be able to reach our objectives. Okay. Um, and it's a process. Um, it's going to take time mm -hmm. and Honestly. we want not only to work hard, but to work smart. Okay. And finally, before I let you go, because I know you're very busy, of course, transition period and all of that. I, I know this is a question the public wants to ask you again. Why should Guyana, why should our parents and our teachers trust Nicolette Henry with our education system and our education sector? Well, first of all, I have to say, you know, I am humbled by the fact that I was invited by His Excellency mm -hmm. to serve in the Ministry of Education. I believe that um, I come from a background of service. I know what it is, first of all, to put people before I put myself. Um, because where I served as an army officer, the pecking order would have been country, the people, and then yourself. Mm -hmm. I have always said that that has always resonated with me very well. And I've lived by those principles. I plan to continue to live by those principles. And, um, and I really want to ensure that I put the education needs of the people of Guyana as a priority. Okay. And so um, I would be happy if the public can join me in this regard and provide me with whatever support they think is needed mm -hmm. to, to move it forward. We're a forward-thinking government, and we therefore need 
um, every forward thinking and right minded Guyanese to come on board and to help us to move the process forward. It's an exciting opportunity. I am happy to be part of the process and I welcome your involvement and your participation. Okay, thank you very much. You're well welcome. said, Madam Minister. Of course, viewers, uh, I'll invite you to stay tuned. Stay with us. Of course, I've been speaking with a minister within the Education Ministry, newly appointed, newly sworn in minister within the Education Ministry, Miss Nicolette Henry. What I'll do now, for some of you who missed it, I'll ask our operators to pull up the, uh, a clip of uh, His Excellency, President Brigadier David Granger, uh, as he addressed the nation last Saturday, soon after he was sworn in, and I'll come right back with you. Hopefully by then the other ministers get here. Stay with us. It is written, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together at the National Assembly of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana as a mark of respect for the Parliament, as a mark of respect for our Constitution, and as a mark of respect for the people of this great country. The best, the biggest, the most beautiful and most bountiful country in the Caribbean, Guyana. We have good reason to rejoice. We rejoice not only in the favorable results, but more particularly in the enjoyment of our democracy. We went into the general and regional elections on the 11th of May as a grand coalition comprising six parties, the Alliance for Change, the Guyana Action Party, the Justice for All Party, the National Front Alliance, the People's National Congress Reform, and the Working People's Alliance. We won the support of the majority of the people. We therefore record our gratitude, first, to the more than 408,000 Guyanese citizens who participated in this most important democratic process last Monday. We campaigned in all 10 regions. We rallied in Kumaka, in the Barima Raiwaini region. We rallied in Anari, China, in the Pomeroon Supernam region. We rallied in Vreden Hoop, in the Essequibo Islands, West Demerara region. We rallied at Golden Grove and Georgetown, in the Demerara Mahaika region. We rallied at Rosignol. We rallied in New Amsterdam and Wim and Caribbean. We rallied in Bartica. We rallied in Madia. We rallied in Lethem. We rallied in Wisbra. We rallied in Lind. In Aichuni. We rallied in Kwakwani. We covered this whole country and we met Guyanese people from every walk of life. We thank also today not only those who voted, but we thank the observers, the officers, the officials, the agents and other workers from the Guyana Elections Commission. We thank those from overseas and from our own country, Guyana. We thank the representatives of foreign missions who worked to ensure that the elections were conducted in a manner that satisfied the standards, international standards for efficiency and credibility. We congratulate 
the successful candidates of all parties who will soon be selected to become members of the 11th Parliament, a Parliament that I will not prorogue. I encourage them to be faithful to their oath of office and to their constituents. Guyanese, the elections are over. The people have chosen their representatives. The Constitution has been respected. Our democracy has been fortified. Let us now put past rivalries behind us and work in unity to banish poverty, ignorance, fear, and hatred. We assemble here today to witness the swearing in, not of a party leader, but of the president of all the people. And I shall be a good president for all the people. We, the Guyanese people, have chosen to inaugurate a government of national unity and to promote multi-party inclusionary democracy. We are convinced that this is the best way to overcome our historic divisions. We have witnessed the damage done to our beautiful country over the past 23 years. We have been mocked by the destruction of local democracy and the denial of local government elections. We have been treated with contempt by the dictatorial prorogation and dissolution of parliament. We have had to bear the brunt of the high rate of crime, including armed robberies, arson, interpersonal violence, murder, piracy, rapes, road fatalities, and trafficking in persons. We've had to bear the cost of squandering of state resources on exorbitant but misconceived mega projects. We have suffered most from the high cost of living and the high level of employment, particularly among our youths. We have not been filled with hatred by these conditions, adverse though they are. We are indeed more determined than ever to refashion society into one, one in which our women folk can look forward to working for living wages to cope with the high cost of living, one in which old folk can enjoy adequate pensions and social protection, one in which our young people will be able to attain higher educational standards and look forward to finding satisfactory jobs when they leave school. One in which our women and girl children can look forward to living in safety and to being protected from abuse and violent crime. We, the Guyanese people, have seized the opportunity to vote to vote for human safety, to vote for national unity, and to vote for inclusionary democracy. We now look to the future. We invite you to attend the formal inauguration ceremony, which will be held at the National Stadium on the 26th of May, Independence Day. We want you all to be there. We also wish to inform you that the outgoing and the incoming administrations have agreed to establish a transition team to facilitate the transfer of assets and the transmission of information needed to ensure the continuity of government and to guarantee the stability of the state. And in so doing, I extend the, heart, the arm of friendship to former President Donald Ramachar and the members of the PPP to join this great movement for national unity.
Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Harmon has been appointed temporarily as head of the Presidential Secretariat to lead the new administration's transition team to manage the transition pro process. We announce also that my friend, brother, and colleague, Mr. Moses Nagamutu, will be appointed Prime Minister as soon as he is sworn in as a member of Parliament in accordance with the Constitution. Guyanese, on the 1st of January this year, we declared that 2015 would be the year of democratic renewal, and it has been. We were right. Let us therefore rejoice in the people's choice. Let us embrace each other, regardless of religion, regardless of race, regardless of class, regardless of occupation. As fellow Guyanese, let us work together to realize our inspiring national motto, one people, one nation, one destiny. And in so doing, let us be reminded of that famous national song. And I will ask you to hold the hand of the person next to you. And let us sing together the song which we all know. Let us cooperate for Guyana. Let us cooperate for our land. Let us resolve to fight together. See we do it right together. Can we do it? Yes. On the count of three. On the count of three. One, two, three. Let us cooperate for Guyana. Let us cooperate for the land. Let us resolve to fight. Can we do it right? Can we do it? Yes, we can. God bless you, Guyana. His Excellency, President David Graves. Of course, those of you who would have just joined us, what you were looking at there was uh, His Excellency, Brigadier the Honorable David Granger, President David Granger, who was making his address to the nation, the first address, after being sworn in as the eighth executive president of this beautiful nation. And I know many of us are now finally proud to say that we are a citizen or are, that we are citizens of this great, wonderful, beautiful, and a nation that will soon become a very, very productive one after being in bondage, after being enslaved for the past two decades. Of course, I'd like to once again take this opportunity to thank Miss Nicolette Henry. Of course, she is the minister within the Ministry of Education. And uh, for those of you who know, who are now joining us, you would have missed a lot, especially those of you who would have expressed uh, some concerns via social media. I know many of you were concerned about the fact that there was no named Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport. You, you did express concerns, especially our youth, but I'd like to join her in uh, trying to assure you and uh, reminding you that youth are the, one of the top priorities of this new government, this new coalition government. We, uh, the youth of a Partnership for National Unity and Alliance for Change, we came out, we came to you and we asked you to support this new government. Of course, that would have been before it was government. We asked you to vote for us. And we will certainly, I'm certainly reminding you that we will hold our leaders accountable and they have not left you out by not having a ministry of youth. That ministry, like as you would have heard from Ms. Henry, that ministry will certainly fall under the education ministry. And the Minister of Education is Dr. Rupert Rupnarain. 
Once again, I'd like to also take this opportunity to say congratulations to all the ministers who have thus far been sworn in, uh, including, uh, and as, as we're on the note of youth, including uh, the youngest minister, the youngest cabinet minister, Miss Annette Ferguson. She is, uh, uh, she has also been sworn in as a minister, and all the others. Hopefully, uh, in the weeks to come, the weeks of this program, I can get all the other ministers. The two ministers that were also expected on this program today is Miss Kathy Hughes, Minister of Tourism and Mr. Basil Williams, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. But of course, you know we're in transition period. This is a working day. It is a weekday. And I, I'm assuming that they would have uh, gotten tied up in other transition matters. Of course, you know I won't let them off scotch-free. They're not here, but they'll definitely have to answer to me because I know the public were the public would have been expecting them as I would have advertised uh, earlier on in the week. So what we'll do now, I'll take this opportunity, yes, this is a shorter version, a shortened version of Facing the Nation. I'll take this opportunity to thank you very much. Thank you viewers for tuning in. Remember, it is a new government. We need your prayers. We need your continued support. So I just want to remind you, if you see or you hear about appointments that you're a bit iffy about or you're unsure, you're not sure if it's going to work, and you know, don't let it keep you up at night. Uh, uh, try not to have <laughs> sleepless nights over it. I can tell you we have a team that knows exactly what it is that they're doing and they will let the public know as we go along what it is that they're doing in terms of decision making. And we also, we did also promise the public consultations and you can see, you will be able to see consultations. As you know, again, support us in every possible way. There is a massive cleanup campaign going around our city as we prepare to celebrate Guyana's 49th uh, independence anniversary. That's next Tuesday, on Tuesday, the 26th of May 2015. That's also the day when we'll have the official and the formal inauguration of the new president, of the new government. So uh, again, support us in every possible way that you can. I know I've been going around the city and lots of persons would have been saying that, you know, they feel lighter. The city feels lighter. Guyana feels lighter. We feel as though a weight has been lifted. And I certainly feel that way. Again, remember, it is a new government. There will be teething problems. Uh, it, it would be foolhardy for anyone to think that you're going to have a perfect government and the transition is going to be smooth immediately. There will be teething problems. Uh, people will feel as though they don't know what's happening. But I can assure you, uh, things will fall into place. And I can, if I can just quote uh, the minister as we were talking while we were off air you know she understands that there are concerns out there but let me just re just rest assured that uh, the government has your best interest at heart and they're doing everything that is humanly possible to ensure that there's a smooth transition and that people will once again begin to feel as though they are a part of this developmental process, the developmental process of this great nation, a nation that His Excellency President uh, David Granger would like to restore to its former glory, not only Georgetown, but the entire country, re restoration in terms of what it used to be. Once again, I'd like you to thank you for tuning in today. Remember, be good Guyanese citizens, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and of course, be safe. Until next time, I am Malika Ramsey. Thanks for watching.